Alright, so this is a suggestion via a channel member. The name of the video is, uh, Piers Morgan reveals who he thinks uh, will win the 2024 election. Let's check it out. Let's go and jump into this immediately. Now stateside, in my studio, I took him out of probably a very important meeting with probably his favorite couple is he of here? drinks. <laughs> is Piers Morgan. Right. Piers, great to see you. Great to see you, Brian. That's fantastic. You, you remain the only man who can get me out on a Saturday night onto television rather than some fancy restaurant. Thank it's you. It's at the top of my resume. Where do you see us? Just being here a week, you went to the MSG rally. Very curious where you see it. I, look, I think it's fascinating. It's, it's electrifying, right? The whole right, world is. is watching this election. Uh, I remember a period about five months ago when everyone feared it might be the most boring race in history. Two old guys duking it out again. How wrong were we? We've had two assassination attempts. We've had Trump in a garbage truck, Trump in McDonald's, like you said. We've had Joe Biden getting assassinated uh, politically by his own party and replaced by Kamala Harris and so on. And oh, yeah, it's been wild. Now it's like on a knife edge, isn't it? I mean, you look at all these swing states and really you can't call any of them with any great authority. You know, tonight nope. there's an outlier poll about Iowa that shows maybe uh, Harris is up there. I don't believe that. It was 15 points, Trump was up. Yeah. And now it just had the Des Moines Red just to put her up. Put that, her that doesn't seem right. And there's another poll in Iowa which has Trump heavily ahead. Look, my gut feeling, and I had this in 2016, and when I was saying it and writing it in 2016, people were laughing at me. But I kept saying, I'm getting a feeling that the Trump train is steaming to victory. I get that feeling again now. Uh, I've been in LA, I've been in uh, New York. I'm getting a lot of people who did not vote Trump last time but who are prepared this time, even if they don't like him, they're prepared to vote for him this time to stop Kamala Harris becoming president. I, I'm going on my gut, right. and I'm feeling he could actually end up winning quite big. And Piers oh yeah, guys, there are definitely a lot of protest votes. Uh, definitely. Like, specifically with Kamala Harris going on The View, I keep going back to this specific moment because it's incredibly important. Uh, when asked simply, uh, what will you be doing uh, differently? She basically says, nothing is wrong, everything is fine, we're going to keep things basically the same. Bro, have you seen the last four years in the United States of America? Do you really think we want anything near that? We don't want that. No, 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 no. So you're not new to the Trump train. I mean, you guys have sparred together. You and yep. Trump, you've been friends for a while, but you also disagree to each other's face, which is relatively unique. But this is what you said to us a short time ago about what you thought, if Trump can come out and win, what it would mean. Watch. It is one of the great comebacks in political history. And I wrote a column for The Sun in London uh, this week, likening it to when Sinatra was thrown to the wolves in the late 40s, thought his career was over, all done and dusted. And then, boom, he comes back from here to eternity. He wins an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, and his career becomes one of the most iconic in the history of American celebrity show business. Donald Trump is on the verge of pulling off a similar comeback. You're not backing off the comments. Well, I think the word Nostradamus should be used there, shouldn't it? Um, oh. I, know, I, I think uh, I, I would compare it, it to what happened with Tiger Woods in golf. Tiger okay. Woods was finished. He was number 1,100 in the world. Everyone was writing him off. The golf world, the celebrity world. He was done, toast, finished, kaput. And what happened? Tiger Woods didn't get the memo. And he fought back and he won the Masters in 2019. Greatest comeback yeah. in the history of sport. If Trump pulls this... Yeah, yeah, because uh, like specifically Tiger Woods, like, I mean, that was all just society basically blowing him out of the water. That really had nothing to do with his overall skill or ability. Uh, so that reference is tricky. But I will say, though, Trump um, did not lose any of his supporters. Right. And in fact, he, he now gained supporters because people saw how Biden was basically running the presidency, how the Democrat Party specifically was allowing uh, for someone who did really did not know what was even going on in front of his face for some reason um, to be the president of the United States of America. Uh, yeah, the world paid attention. This off and it is obviously incredibly close, but I think he, he will pull this off. And if he does, it is the greatest comeback in the history of politics. He becomes the Tiger Woods of, of politics. And it's it would be an reference. extraordinary thing. We but. can remember, can't we? Start of 2022, it was over. You know, Ron DeSantis was surging away in the polls for the Republican nominee, and Trump was gone, done. Look at him now. It's incredible. He was by himself in Mar-a-Lago, and now he's got a better team around than ever before. Mm. The other question I had, the only you can answer, is what's the rest of the world think uh, about him as a leader? Because we keep hearing that the rest of the world didn't like him. But I talked to the president of Poland, loves a guy. No, it, and then I talked to Prime Minister Boris Johnson this week. And I said, honestly, he's got a book out. He really likes you. You have the very similar accent. 
This is what he said about Trump, Trump as a global leader that he saw. I had a good relationship with him. With Donald Trump? With, yeah. And um, I... If people, you know, who are liberal friends of mine in the UK kind of freak out when I say this, but I, you know, I enjoyed his company. No, actually, do you like I, him as I, a person or do you yes, like him as a leader? I, yes, yes. Do you I, like him as a leader? I, so I'm here as a terrible, you know, I'm going to confess that I, I both, right? And um, I've always found him the model of kind of old world courtesy and charm. And he thinks the world needs a strong leader in America. I think a lot of people feel that. I think a lot of people think two things. One, that Trump, in his own blunt way, take NATO, for example. What did Trump do with NATO? He was misquoted as saying he wants to get rid of it. No, he didn't. He said, look, if America's going to pay the big lion's share of the costs of NATO, you will have to stump up and pay what you're supposed to be paying, and you're not. What's happening now? Have you noticed? Every other NATO country yeah. is now paying what they should have been paying. That is billions of dollars they wouldn't have been paying if Trump hadn't rattled the American sabre of power. And America does that because America, in the end, has to do most of the heavy lifting. So right. I think Trump has right. a blunt right. way right. of going right. about things, yes. Sometimes his rhetoric can be, you know, it can be controversial. It can be disappointing, if you like. Right. Sometimes he's groan and go, don't say that, Donald. But yeah. Actually, on the world stage, a lot of world leaders that I've talked to and interviewed, they have a respect for him. They do think he's a tough character. They do think he gets stuff done. And they do think this weird mm -hmm. way he goes about dealing with people like Putin, like President Xi, like Kim Jong-un. You know, he, he brings them in, if you like. And I think it's quite an effective tactic. You get these dictators, these, these very controversial foreign leaders. Trump gets them in. He sits down with them. He treats them with respect makes it quite tricky for them to pull stunts on his watch, and they didn't. Right, uh, I also think that... Guys, really quickly, so I live I live in Europe half the year, every single year. Um, now, what's interesting is, is that I can definitely tell you, keep in mind, this is Spain, um, so Spain's politics are just completely, massively different. I don't... Uh, you no. Know, um, I'm not sure anyone likes Trump at all. At all. Um, that I've encountered at least. I think if you go pr pretty much uh, out of where I'm at uh, and go towards like the central of Spain, most likely, right? But um, other than that, no, 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 no. I've never heard anyone st give any type of a claim or anything, uh, say anything positive um, about him. You have to go to specifically people like Boris Johnson, of course. And a lot of the issues he In ran this on context. in 2016 are more apropos today. Build a wall. Oh, we're not going to build a wall. Get rid of sanctuary cities. Oh, you're so mean. Almost every sanctuary city is going, we, how did it get so bad? And how, do, how did we not finish that wall? And what are the two big issues? Economy, That's immigration. That's true. Very what true. What are the two things that the American voters in all the polls I've seen trust most with Trump over Harris? Right. Immigration and the economy. They right. believe he will get this cost of living crisis over and done. And they believe with immigration, he'll be tougher than she is. And if in the end he wins, it will be because of those two issues. All right. I have uh, bad news for Del Frisco's or the Hard Rock. Pierce is coming. Elio. And guys, really quickly, what Pierce just said is absolutely correct. All right. And that's where you're going? Okay. <laughs> that's where you're going right after. I'm, no, I'm actually running a couple of minutes late. So if you wouldn't mind just wrapping this, Brian, I, I, I've got a meal to go to. Well, I don't have a live audience, so I'll do it by myself. By the power. <laughs> invested in me you are free to go pierce thanks so much to see you. all right guys oh all right i'm gonna say bye and shake hands respect um but yeah i do think it's gonna come down to um honestly four issues here um four issues i'm going to say the economy immigration uh if if you like the concept or you agree with the concept of deleting babies uh that's going to be one of the other concepts um uh, and uh, no, let's just say three. It's just going to come down to these things because both of uh, the candidates currently are talking um, about immigration, the economy, but one of the parties is just talking about deleting babies. Uh, and so I think it's really, it really just comes down to those things, like you, whichever one you you agree with. Right? Um, but and me, I'm a single issue voter. Taxes, that's what I care about almost almost exclusively. Uh, and that's because I live on multiple places throughout the year. Uh, what affects me most is having to pay taxes in the United States of America when I'm not in the United States of America. I don't like that at all. But either way, guys, listen, <laughs> let me know in the comments what you guys think. I do think that if Trump does win, um, the economy and um, immigration would absolutely um, be corrected probably within the first month. 
hardcore. And it's the reason why there are like multiple car- like migrant caravans uh, flooding uh, the southern border currently at this uh, specific time. Right? This is why this is happening. They're trying to get here before um, either Trump, if Trump wins, they know they're not coming in here. They know it. Right? They, in fact, know it. But all right. Uh, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out. <laughs>